Welcome to Stitch Crazy and I am going to show you how to um, put a blue jean quilt together with Rick Rack and Lace. I showed you once before but we're going to go over it again. A few of the supplies that you're going to need is, is um, a cutting board, a rotary cutter, your thread, we're going to have our, our acrylic cutting ruler and a pair of scissors. Uh, your blue jeans, you will need different colors of blue jeans. We're going to be cutting strips like this, making them into squares. So first of all, we will cut out the blue jeans. Okay. So I've got my pair of jeans here and I have cut them apart so that we can have a leg to go by here. And I'm going to lay that out. And normally I would cut the whole strip and then I would cut my squares from there. But today I am just going to show you how I am going to cut the square from the blue jeans. I'm gonna cut one row here and then I'm going to cut it down here. And I'm gonna flip my material here, get this out of the way. And then I'm gonna cut this down one side here. I am going to flip my piece. And then I'm going to cut the other side. And we've got one square cut, okay? We will cut as many squares as we need for our quilt. Um, I'm just making a smaller recliner quilt so I won't need as many. And, and the next step that we're going to do after we cut all our blue jeans, I will get rid of my excess blue jeans here. A lot of the times I will cut strips like, like this. These are just random strips that I've cut from blue jeans. And then I would cut my squares from there. And then they're different colors. Okay. Now our second step when we're making this particular quilt, which is going to look like this. This is one that is started. I do need to finish this. I have two rows left to put on here and I wanted to show you um, the different variations. This has Rick Rack and Lace on each one of these squares. This one I'm using purple for my sashing. And behind me here, you will see how I've used a different color for my sashing, so it makes my quilt look totally different. This one is purple. This one here I showed last time. And this one has the black polka dots. So they all look totally different, but yet they're the same quilt, okay? So you can make your quilt any way you would like it to be. You can make these squares bigger, smaller. This is a nice size. This is six and a half inch square. And this makes the quilt go faster. If you want to make eight inch squares with the seams, it would be probably a finished seven inch square. This one here is actually finished at five and a half. Okay. So I am going to show you, I, I showed you my samples. On this block here, I have already taken and put rickrack and lace on the square. Valley Smart Solutions are now available for your farm, home, and business. Sign up this month and receive 10% off of surveillance cameras and your first month of off-site storage for free. Call Valley today for your free customized quote at 437-2615. Valley Telecommunications the home team advantage all right um, we are this is one example of the block with Rick rack and lace here's sample number two with totally different lace and Rick rack and here's a third block so this one's crisscross so you can make these squares any direction, any shape, form of the rickrack and lace, depending on what you like. 
we found that the combination of three is a good combination. Doesn't make it look too bare, doesn't make it look too busy. Okay, so when I have um, got all my squares cut out and the size I want, I lay them down and then I sew these strips on to each of the squares. So then what I do is I cut from my sashing, which is gonna be all the strips in between and in between the rows. So I cut these two and a half inches for this particular quilt. This can vary too if you want a three inch or three and a half. That's totally up to you. However you wanna make your quilt is up to you. So what I do to make things go faster, I take my strip and on this particular one, I've already sewn one block to. So I'm gonna take another one here. I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine. Turn that on. I'm gonna put my piece underneath here. And to make this row go faster, what I've done beforehand is I've sewed these on in this particular way where I lay multiple pieces on this strip and I sew and I just lay it on I don't pin it on but you can pin it on if you're more comfortable with that my sewing machine has a fourth inch foot so I just lay it up against the edge of the seam and I'll get my foot feet here and then I'll just sew it on. And I'll do that till I get to the end. And see how we've got one square, then we got a little bit of material, and then I put the other square. And I just continue to keep doing that until this is finished with the Rick Rack and Lace squares. Okay. And I'll cut the thread off here. When I have all of these squares on this piece of material, and because this is on an acrylic self-healing board, I take and lay it on there. This rotary cutter, this is a razor blade on the end of this rotary cutter. So when you're not using it, make sure that um, it's not exposed because it's very sharp and it can cut you. So when cutting the strips, the squares off of the strips, I just lay this down and take my rotary cutter and cut it right off here. And then I'll do the same here. And then this makes another one of these pieces that I have lying here. And now this one has a little bit on the end. So I will take my board or my cutting ruler and take and cut that excess off. It just makes it easier when you're sewing the squares onto each other. Okay. So now I have all of these squares that I want to sew together. Now we go that way. So now what I do is I take these and I put the fabric onto the blue jeans and I will sew that together. We'll just take a few minutes here to sew this. Take it to your machine, line up the seams, and then just sew away. And to make it faster, you can just take the next one. This one here, I guess I have a little excess, so I'm going to cut that off also. Straight even with my material here, my blue jeans and my fabric. And then what I'll do here is I'll just take and put the purple fabric up against the blue jean material, take it over to my sewing machine again, and we will just start sewing. Get my 
my scissors here. I'm going to cut this piece apart. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take this one out. Now you will see how I have two. And then I have two more. And then we can take and sew these two pieces together to continue to make the roll longer. And then just line up your seams again and sew. have four squares sewed together to make a row. Okay. Once you get that done, your row is going to look like this. I've done this ahead of time. This is to go onto my quilt that I have ready here. So then what I'm going to do, I'll just put these pieces aside. So I can show you what we're going to do next. Okay, I'm going to take the piece that I've already got mostly sewn and we're going to lay it down here. This you might have to do a little figuring because you want, we have these sashings here and we have the sashings on this piece that's already almost completed. So you kind of want to be able to make them, oops, we will do it this way. Get, get my quilt put together right here. If it didn't, I would tear it out and do it over again. Okay, so, and the reason what I did here is this is the long row and I was going the opposite way where you had the shorter here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece here, I'm gonna line it up with the edge, and here you're gonna need pins. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move my machine this way to give us a little more room. And I'm going to grab my pins. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm lining up my rows. I'm going to take the end row at the very edge and I'm going to pin that. And then I kind of try to um, look at the row in front of it or behind it here. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball my seams. And then I'm just going to pin it right there. And then I will hold this and I'll pin it in the middle of each square just to kind of secure it. Now, sometimes if you're sewing, it may not match perfectly. We try to um, get it as close as we can. And so then here again, I will lay my piece and I have my seams here. So I line them up with the seams on the row right before it. And then I'll just pin, and then I'll pin in the middle of the blue jean here. Okay, and you just keep doing this until you have the whole row pinned. Okay, and then we'll take that to the sewing machine. We will sew this whole row. Okay, once we've got the whole row pinned down and laid out the way we want, we'll take it to the sewing machine and we will sew this row together. Okay, and then we'll just keep sewing. We've got everything lined up so we don't have to worry about anything. So we'll just, the seams you may want to make sure they lay down in the certain direction that they fall. So 
we get in the different size of quilts it'll take you longer to do a bigger size this is kind of in between uh, a recliner throw and a full size you'll see here is the other row attached to the quilt and then I would do one more row of plain to make it for the edging and then the next step would be putting it all together Valley Telecommunications is pleased to announce that our technology solutions center is fully stocked and open for business we have a large selection to meet your wants and needs. Some of the items we currently carry are a variety of corded and cordless phones, different brands of tablets such as Kindle Fires and Apple iPads and all the accessories for them, Telekin computers, Epson and HP printers and ink cartridges, Apple iPods and accessories, office supplies, wireless keyboards and mice, cellular phones and accessories, different types of media storage, cameras, headphones, power strips and surge protectors, and much, much more. You can also get your very own Valley Swag. Our prices are reasonable and comparable to any other retail store. If there is something that you want or need that we do not currently carry, please let us know so that we can check into it for you. We accept all major credit cards, cash or check. Please feel free to stop by our office and check out our new and improved store for all of your technology and day-to-day -day business needs. Now I'm going to do kind of a, a short version on how to put this together. Pretend that this little piece here is my quilt, okay? So the supplies that we're going to need is our quilt, our backing, a piece of batting, pins to hold it down and at the end we're going to be taking floss this is what I prefer because it's easier to pull through to tie it together now there is another option you can um, machine stitch also but in this particular case I'm just going to tie it for a quick quilt to be done and then we'll also need needles for the tying of the yarn or the thread I should say embroidered thread okay so first of all I have my two pieces of quilt, my backing and my batting. Okay, the backing right side to the table. Then I'm gonna take my piece of batting and I am going to lay that down on there. Okay, and then I am going to cut this the size I need. A little bigger is just fine. And then I'm going to put my top, my quilt top on there. We're going to lay that all out and we're just going to kind of smooth it down. With a bigger quilt, I would maybe like tape the back down. With this small piece, I'm not going to worry about it, but I tape them down so that it's tight. And then you can put the batting and the backing. And then what I do, this is just on a smaller version here. I take and I pin it. I take and kind of go from the middle out. Okay. And what this is doing is it's sandwiching 
putting all your layers together in one and holding it together so it will not move. And the reason I'm doing it from the middle out is then you can kind of smooth it out and if you have any wrinkles, it'll move towards the outside. So then I'll just go over here, do the same thing. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll just kind of pin it. Okay, now you would do this with your whole quilt top. So you would either need to do it on the floor or if you have a table, a lot of times you'd put two tables together and lay it down and you'd do the same technique, put the backing, the batting, and then top on the top and pin it together. Our next step would be to take our thread. You could do it either way. You could have this one where you're going to see your, um, your ties or here this one would blend in. For today I'm going to do the, the lime green so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take a piece about this long and when you're doing this you'll kind of get used to what length is good for you. You don't want it too long so that it gets in your way, tangles up, because what I'm going to do is fold it in half. Okay, and then I'm going to take a needle and you want to get a needle that's not going to be, uh, the eye here isn't going to be too big so that it puts too big of a hole in your quilt when you're bringing them through but big enough to work with as far as putting threading your needle here. This might be the part that's a little harder to do. Get your thread through there. There you go. Now what I've got here, my thread is doubled. So the first way to tie your quilt, I want to have a tie right here. It's in the middle. So then I'll take that pin out. I'll put it down so I can feel it hitting the table and then I'll bring it up about a quarter of an inch and you'll get used to it the more you do it the smaller you'll be able to do it so here I've got my needle in and bring it back up I'll pull this thread through and then I'm just gonna kind of judge it and I'm just gonna cut it here and then what I would do is I would probably do multiple of these I'll take this thing out and I'll take it, put my needle down so it feels like I can get through the backing. You want to make sure you catch your back and then bring it up, pull it through, and I'll just kind of use your own judgment. You can have, once you tie these, like I'm going to kind of judge from the one before and just kind of snip it off, and I'll do one more here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to put the needle down in the fabric to the back and then bring it back up so I have a little hook. Make sure, and if you want, you can always put your finger in the back and make sure it's catching your back. Oops, I'm going to do that again. And it depends how you want it tied, if you want it like with the squares. If you want to tie it on the corners or um, every so often in the middle of the sashing, that's entirely up to you how you want that done. I'm going to bring this through and then I'm going to cut this tie. Okay, now once we've got them tied, we'll go back and do like a square knot tie. This one is this way and then we'll go the opposite direction and do a square knot because a square knot will stay versus a regular knot. And sometimes we just do it a third time to make sure that it's going to stay. So we'll do another square knot. We'll bring the thread over and through like normal. And then you'll do it the opposite direction to do a square knot. There we go. Same with this one. We'll bring my yarn through, the thread through. Make a square knot. We'll go the opposite direction. There we go. And you just keep doing that until your whole quilt is tied. And then once we get this done, we'll have to put something on the edge. We'll bind the edge. 
Valley's Mobile Command Center is coming to a town near you. Stop in at Valley's Mobile Command Center to learn more about our services, see and test some of our products, ask questions, or just to visit with us. Make sure to check your newsletter for specific dates and times when we will be rolling into your town. Valley Telecommunications, the home team advantage. Okay, there's a couple different things. Um, I selected the embroidery floss, but you can also take this knit crochet thread and you can also use this for tying if you don't want to use the embroidery floss, okay? And then another um, point I forgot to mention earlier is the batting. There's a couple different kinds of batting. With the blue jeans, I like to use like the low loft batting because then it doesn't get so thick. With blue jean quilts, they can get very heavy the bigger that they get. So the low loft batting just kind of makes it just a little bit of a filler in it. Now, if you do want the puffier effect, then you could go with the mountain mist and that's a polyester batting. Okay, so there's different kinds of battings that you can use. All right. Now, I am going to show you quickly how to put a binding on this quilt. So now our quilts are all put together. The finishing piece is the binding. I've taken a two and a half inch strip and cut that of the same material that um, I've got my fabric out of my sashing. So then I fold that in half and I press it. Okay, once I have all my whole binding pressed, then what I would do is I would put it on the front part of the quilt and I would pin it down all the way around. And I'm starting not in a corner because when I'm done with this, I want to actually be able to take and put two pieces together and make a nice, um, like nice edging. So here what I'll do is I'm going to take and sew part of this on. You know what, I'm gonna take it and put it closer to the edge so then I can kind of show you how to turn a corner. We're gonna go over here. Okay, got these two. Okay, I have a little excess batting, so I'm gonna cut that off so that I can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I would normally do that. I, when you have your quilt top and backing together, you usually cut the batting off so that there's no excess around the edge. All right, so once we take this two and a half inch strip, fold it in half, we'll pin it to our piece, and then I'll sew it, and then when we're done, we're gonna flip it around, and then we're gonna hand stitch it on. But I'm gonna kinda quick go through here. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. We will sew that around. I was just gonna quick kind of show you how we do a corner. And there are books that you can, um, how to finish your quilts and stuff. So we'll take and go about a fourth inch from the edge. And then I'm gonna back stitch. And then I'm gonna pull this out. I am going to flip my material. I'm gonna fold this in half backwards here. Here, I'll just pull it out. I have my seam here, and I want to fold it back like that. So it makes like a V here. And then I'm going to bring it back this way. And what this will do, it's going to make your corner. So then I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to take my fourth inch seam and I'm going to continue on from the end. And then you would just go all the way around. Okay, once we've completely gone around, 
we would take it out. And here what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how it makes a corner. It kind of makes a mitered corner when you're flipping that. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my quilt around and I'm going to take the, it's folded here so you have a edge and you just take it around and you pin it. And here I have a little excess batting. Let me cut that off. Okay, and then the corner. This is a little tricky. You just have to, you have it mitered here. You have it folded. And then you just take it and you fold it in, in the corner, just like you did. A mitered is kind of a triangle. And then you just continue on like that, folding it back. Okay, now what I would do from here, see how nice that looks? It's got the corner here and then the corner back here, they match. And then you could do this one of two ways. You can either take this to your machine and stitch this down, but then you have to be careful that you get that stitched in the ditch which is kind of the seam line or what I do is I always hand stitch it done and then you're done with your quilt. So this will conclude today's show and um, thank you for watching Stitch Crazy and if you have any ideas or if you'd like to be a host on the show please call Valley at 437-2615. Thank you.